Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Look TV from London. With us today is Bill Hubart. He's Chief Economist at Markets.com. Mr. Hubart, thank you Thanks. very much for being with us. Okay, let's start off with the Fed. Last night we had the minutes come out. A small group within the FOMC started to talk or starts to believe in the convenience of talking about a first rate hike towards the end of this year. This is new. Yes, it is. But also, the simple fact is, this was the first time we had a unanimous decision with no dissenters since June of 2011. Uh, again, it could be a situation where they're talking their own Fed district, where we've seen maybe growth improving better. But, but the market right now, whether it be Fed fund futures, whether it be Eurobor futures, or even the, the bond market, is not implying any move by the Fed until well towards the end of the second quarter of next year. Okay. Moving on, uh, another geographical region, <clears throat> closer to home, United yeah. Kingdom, cable. It's at 167. It looks like it might move towards 169 over the next couple of weeks. But if it moves beyond there, the graphs seem to indicate that you could see a quick move even higher. Well, I think you're probably going to have two or 300 banks, brokerage firms globally that are going to be out of business because, uh, you know, my feeling is uh, I, I am, in, you know, talking about shorting at 166.50, looking at 164 by the end of the, of the first quarter. And also, with that, people still don't believe uh, Governor Kerry when he talked Davos, the 24th of January, in last week's quarterly inflation report. There will be no rate hikes until at least February, that's my feeling, February of next year. And, and even, even the Chancellor this morning saying, well, uh, this isn't the... Uh, uh, the an equal recovery. And one of the things that also, yes, we had very good employment numbers, but we still have almost 22% of the economy that are, quote, underemployed. We still have over a million that are temporary, okay? And until we get the real follow through, we start seeing exports and we start seeing, quote, the consumer shopping till they drop, hmm. that we are not going to get any kind of, quote, what the bank wants, what the chancellor wants, a sustained recovery. In 165, 167, this is going to murder uh, UK exports. Okay, I think that's pretty clear. <laughs> European Central Bank, yes. Mr. Draghi, yes. he's behind the curve? Yes. Uh, my feeling was, you know, that maybe we would get a 10 to 15 basis point rate cut in March. It may be delayed until the second quarter, because the fact is we're seeing an artificial appreciation in the euro. Now, everybody looks at euro dollar. Well, yes, the euro, do euro dollar is moving up, but 135, 136, 137, these are levels that will kill it. But it really is not so much euro dollar. It's Polish slotty, Hungarian foreign, and of course, you, you can probably say it better than I can, the Ukrainian, or whatever it is, and that's what you're seeing, okay? You're seeing a flight out of those, quote, emerging market currencies into the safe euro rather than into what we used to call the safe dollar. Okay. Uh, if I may, one last question. Sure. Um, if I may, China. I saw a reference last week, uh, I believe it was Barclays Research. They said that the risk of a liquidity crisis in China this year is a major risk. It's something to watch out for. Do you share that opinion? No. It, uh, I, and again, I don't share the opinion where everybody says the renminbi will all of a sudden become a convertible currency. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, my Chinese isn't that good, but one or two times when Hu Flung Pu or Zhao Bingbing or whatever his name is, has basically been asked that question. Mm -hmm. His basically is inferred is, yes, it will be convertible, quote, with our permission. And I still go back to the second plea number, which was 12 years ago, mm -hmm. when China said we are one economy with two currencies the Hong Kong dollar and the renminbi. I do not see China making the renminbi convertible anytime soon. And, I, and I've said that once and I'll say it again. So it's a simple fact is, but remember, this is still a controlled economy. You know, they can quote fine, <laughs> whatever money they want to. And, and we've seen some very, very big, large, very strong moves in excuse me, the non-deliverable forwards and the repo market. Okay. The funds are there. If nothing else, you know, they just, they just you know, took in like $47 billion uh, US, US dollars, okay? For the simple fact is they sold treasuries. So, so, so that's money in there. And of course, you know, the remembi would be the non-deliverable currency against the dollar. So, so the funds are there, okay, to be able to, I guess, maintain a, quote, controlled economy. So I, I, I'm not there, nor, nor 
was I, you know, was I bowled over by Robert Peston's story about what he was talking about in China on television the other night. Okay, uh, I didn't see that. Uh, uh, basically, again, about a controlled economy. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the stuff he was talking about was something that we'd seen three, four, five years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's a situation where they're moving very quickly, but it's also a situation where they are adjusting. So I look at being a positive move with their GDP going down because the simple fact is now they're starting to pay not great, mm-hmm. but they're compa- paying competitive salaries, okay? Mm-hmm. And of course, remember, you've had, what, a third of the, of the country in the last 20 years move from being farmers that are paid two and six to being moving to the cities mm-hmm. again whatever those cities are but really being paid now a, a a livable wage and the simple fact is we saw when the market was concerned about Ch- Chinese GDP dropping from 10 percent to seven to seven and a half we saw how it aff- how it affected especially like places like Australia and New Zealand mm-hmm. so now I, I I do not see uh, the renminbi being convertible, but I'm not concerned about, I think it's a healthy conversion Mm -hmm. of China becoming competitive uh, in the world economy. So no risk of a liquidity crisis in China? I don't think so. I mean, I think it, it, I I don't think, when when you're looking at it, whether it be the U.S., whether it be the U.K., whether it be the Eurozone, liquidity is not a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. And, And we see this, okay? The banks, the central banks have the liquidity. It, it's not being lent mm-hmm. by the regional banks, okay? But there is no problem with liquidity. Okay. Mr. Kubert, thank you very thank much you. once again for your time. And unfortunately, that's all, that, all the time that we have for today. But we do hope that you will join us again next week. From Digital Look TV in London, until next week, goodbye.